Hi everyone, it's August 1st. Hey, new month, ready to go. You're here at the Chaos Weekly Community Call um, slash Hangout. So welcome everybody. Great to see you all here today. Uh, quick reminders, as we always do, this meeting is under the Chaos Code of Conduct. So keep that in mind as you interact with us today. You are more than welcome to keep your camera on, off, whatever makes you comfortable. You can interact with us in the chat. You can raise your hand. You can pretty much just do whatever you want to do here. We're good. Uh, this meeting is for us to come together as a, a global community and talk about things that are pertinent to all of chaos. So if you're wondering what the purpose of this meeting is, that's it. And I think that's all my little announcement thing that I do at the beginning. Yeah. Here's a minute. Um, let me just move this chat over. There we go. Cool. If you can't decide who your favorite actor, actress, performer is, you're not alone because I asked the question. I don't even know. So that was dumb. Why? Why would I do that to myself and others? I don't know. So apologies. It was a really hard question to answer. Um, yeah, but you can think about it. You can come back and put in an answer later if you want. Um, so the first thing on our agenda is, hooray, Dawn is here, officially, for good, forever, yay. yay. And I wanted to give Dawn, I wanted to give you a, a, a little space to just kind of talk about what your role is going to be and what, what kinds, what's on your mind for data science at chaos. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, to be honest, I'm still figuring that out. So uh, I'm looking forward to to help with that process as well. Um, so my, my first step this morning was to create a data science channel in, in the Slack. So now, now we have that. So we have a place where we can, we can start collaborating. I am working on a doc to outline some of the initial things that, that I'll focus on, at least uh, kind of a getting started deliverable. So things that I'll work on over the next couple of months. I should be able to share that uh, more broadly uh, in the next day or two. I have one question for Sean that's in the document that I need answered before I can share it more broadly. So um, once once I get that feedback from from Sean, I'll share it in the data science channel, and we can uh, we can talk about it. And you all can let me know whether or not you think I'm working on the the right stuff or uh, feedback about how to do things. That would be uh, appreciated. There are kind of kind of four things I'm going to focus on at least uh, initially. One is one is working on kind of our our software positioning. So we have we have these two pieces of software. We've kind of told people you know hey you know use our software, but we haven't really provided a lot of uh, really much guidance on what which which pieces of software would be better depending on what questions they're trying to answer, what kind of um, you know what kind of role they're in, what they're trying to do. So I'm going to work with the Augur team and the Grimoire Lab team to see if we can provide a little bit more guidance to people of which which of the software packages might be better for, for different use cases. Yeah, I think that would be a great conversation to have. And yeah, because so right direction. now the web the website has sort of just random things about each piece of software, but it doesn't actually say if you're this if you're this type of person, you know, maybe start with this, um, with this, or you'll know, I don't know. We'll figure that out. Uh, we don't have, I don't have any answers yet, but I feel like it's something that we need to do as a project in order to help people really get more meaningful insights out of the software and, and have a positive experience going into, um, into chaos. Um, the second one is building a kind of a data science community. So the Slack channel is a start for that. Anyone can participate in this data science community. You don't need to have specific skills. I had somebody ask me uh, earlier today if they can participate, even if they don't uh, know how to do machine learning. Uh, yes, I expect to do very little machine learning, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of stuff incorporated in data science, and anybody with an interest in you know data and extracting value from data is more than more than welcome. So we'll figure out how to how to drive that. Whether we need a working group, whether it makes more sense to just collaborate asynchronously, we have um, we have lots of options there. So we'll kick off some of those discussions shortly. I also think we need to better understand some of the challenges people have had in the past with either the chaos project as a whole, our metrics, our software. So I'm going to come up with at least in the next couple of months, come up with a plan for how to best understand those challenges, whether we wanna do some more kind of formal research or whether we wanna have just have informal discussions with people 
but looking at somehow getting some of this feedback and better understanding what people have struggled with in the past, and then using that next year to help us as a, as a project make improvements to help people better use um, our tools, our software, our metrics, and better interact with the community. And then like with lots of things, there's also an evangelism component to all of this to actually promote the things that we do, not just the data science initiatives, but you know, on a more um, holistic level, promoting the work that we do within chaos and how people can use it to generate meaningful insights out of the data that they have about their projects. So, you know, that will include things like, uh, I'm gonna work with Georg and see if we can revitalize the Chaos Cast podcast now that I have some time that I could devote to that. Um, along with maybe a few data science uh, topics to put in the in the podcast. Um, you know, presentations, maybe some blog posts, uh, other opportunities to promote the work. So those are those are kind of the four things that that I'm planning to start with. And like I said, I will provide more um, a document with more details so you can comment on it, provide suggestions. You know, I'm I'm looking at kind of doing this role in a very collaborative way. So I'm looking forward to whatever whatever input people have and whatever help you can provide. That would be fab. I'm just excited that you're here and doing this, Don. I am so excited. So excited. Okay, that's it. That's all I got in data science. I have two comments and maybe one question. So yeah. one comment is you need to go back and watch all the videos from the last month because we have a whole bunch of ideas for you that have come out of all of our working groups. So oh, good. Okay, that's all. I'll work on that. <laughs> Um, the second comment is I really I, I really like this list um, in part because I think it kind of like broadly looks at what we have existing in the chaos project like and tightens that up and like helps with the messaging of the things that we already have developed over the course of the last you know five six years um, to help people engage with the things that we have so I really I feel like that's kind of in here and I really really like that. Um, and then the question I have for you is like, how do you, do you, have you thought about like how we balance like consulting work with, with being an open source community? So like, if we're going to be helping, I struggle with this myself. It's not like a set up question. Um, as we help people and organizations, like just, I'm, it's always, it always seems like a very difficult balance for me, because we're trying to get people to engage with our software, engage with the metrics, we're trying to make it make sense in their own context. But at some point, we have to stop and kind of just say, you, you got to do this by yourself. So I don't know if you have thoughts there. And it's okay. Yeah. If you don't, but. Um, it, it's something I'm gonna have to spend a little bit more more time thinking about. Um, but, you know, I, I do think that there, there are certainly I think ways ways to do this that have worked for for other things that that I've worked on in the past. So you know, if you this this role is actually in a way kind of similar to um, my CNCF um, technical advisory group for contributor strategy, the the co chair position, because we provide loads of advice to CNCF projects on things like like governance and contributor strategy. So you know, I think. I think from the standpoint of, of providing people with advice, best practices, feedback on the things that they're doing, um, those are good places to start um, from a kind of a scalable perspective. And then I think we need to figure out, you know, other other options. Like, you know, we've we've talked about trying to make this uh, position more financially sustainable over time. So I don't know what that would mean, and that's that's something we should look at whether we you know, have people who can do some of this, this work on, on a more consultative basis with, with companies that, that would be interested in paying for some more, more detailed work or not. I, I'm not sure what, what that's going to, what that's going to look like, but I think that that's something that we should be thinking about over time. Right on. Thanks. Any other questions? I have a question. Yes. What's the name of this channel? Is it just strict data science? Is there a hyphen? Data dash science. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then my second question was this, building the data science community. Is this something you want to do within chaos or with external folks? Like a more of a context? Um, no, the idea is to do this within chaos. Okay. <clears throat> so not, not a general data science community, but a, 
a chaos data science community gotcha. because there are loads of people working on you know loads of data scientists who participate in the chaos project like Sophia um, some of the folks at Red Hat who participate on a pretty regular basis um, but then there are lots of people who do sort of data science -y activities that might not be full-time data scientists and I would like for them to participate in, in this as well. And then do you see, and maybe you don't know the answer to this too, I'm just uh, curious, do you see that like a having liaisons that kind of inform other groups based on what's talked about in the, okay. Yeah, I think the, I think the liaison roles are going to be important. I need to catch up. I see that we uh, assigned some liaisons and, and had some conversations around that, that I need to, uh, I need to catch up on, on those discussions, but I do think the liaisons are going to be um, important. And I do think that you know, in particular, this role, the, the you know, I, I plan to go to a lot of the working group meetings, really as kind of as many as I can, probably more than I've attended in the past, so that we can um, make sure that this this role gets sort of integrated in all of the things that we're doing so that we're not not missing things. But I, I do, I, I would like to work closely with the, the liaisons that we've already identified and see how we can, how we can work together on the data science initiatives. Yeah, and to be fair, we just did that last week, so yeah. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't miss much. And if you want to scroll down, you can see kind of who those folks ended up being. I think we did oh. it last, yeah, right here. Um, here. So, yeah. Very cool. Any other questions for Dawn? There lots and lots, but I don't need to do it now. <laughs> So exciting. Uh, I joined late. Welcome back, Dawn, and congratulations again. Thank you, Ruth. Yeah, I don't know if, okay, okay maybe not the question, but I know um, during the, I, I see something about building a data science community, and I just joined in, so um might not have some context, but my question or my what I wanted to say is during a lot of times during the Chaos Africa meetings, um, we get a lot of people that are doing data science and they ask questions on how they can get involved. So I am uh, my thoughts would be that this um number two I'm seeing here is where I can direct them to. Yeah, okay. that would be great. And yeah, initially you can direct them to the data science Slack channel. And that's where we're going to have some discussions about um, what what we need from a chaos data science community and what we should do, whether we need whether we need a working group, whether we don't. Um, we'll have those discussions uh, kick off in the Slack channel, and then once we figure out exactly how we want to build this community and what we want to do and how we want to organize ourselves, um, then we'll probably have some more more guidance for what people can work on. Okay, sweet. Yeah, thank you. All right, anything else for Dawn? Awesome, all right. We will go ahead and move on. Um, quick update, uh, we have some passes uh, that we were given from All Things Open folks because we are a media partner because we have a booth there. So they've offered us some free registrations. Um, we have four passes and two exhibitor only passes. Um, and then if we have folks above and beyond that, we can get them at the, or they can get them at the early bird price of $99 for a full ticket, which is not terrible. I mean, it's a pretty good conference. You, it's jam packed. So that would be a good bang for your buck, I think. Um, it is October 15th to 17th. You can find more information there, uh, specifics about it. I would, um, if you're interested in receiving any of those, uh, just reach out to me and I can connect you with um, how to how to register. I would just ask that if you take one of those passes, you might um, be willing to help us out with some booth duty <laughs> while you're there would be great. I um, mean, of course, this does not include travel expenses, so you will be responsible for getting there and um, staying there on your own. It's just the just the registration straight registration. Uh, anybody have questions about this? Who's who's going so far? Is it just you right now, Elizabeth, for the booth? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Okay, you're going, right? Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're going, Matt. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. 
Uh, yeah. And I'm a, that's going to be my primary uh, thing there is to staff the booth, but um, there are, you know, some other talks and things I would like to go to if I can. So I could probably go. The member summit is like uh, 24th to the 26th. Yeah. yeah. So it's actually just like a week after, but I think that would be okay. Yeah. Yeah. I could possibly go if we're in a pinch and we really need someone there, but. But my talks weren't accepted, and it's sandwiched in between the Ospology Live in Frankfurt and the LF Member Summit, so it would be logistically hard for me. But I, I could if we really needed somebody else there. But it would be better to send somebody who it's going to cost less for travel or somebody who's more eager to go than I am. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it is in, in Raleigh, North Carolina, for those uh, who are curious or thinking about going so it's a fabulous event so if you if you haven't been and you're interested um i i would encourage people to go it really is it really is a nice event i've actually never been oh, you should oh go. interesting yeah. they usually do a community leadership summit um the part of the weekend before along with a like a diversity summit so so the content is um is pretty pretty good Right, I'm getting pressured into going. <laughs> yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to pressure you, but it is. I agree with Don. It is a good show, uh, so it's worth at least going once and getting a sense of what it's like. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and travel might not be too bad. I know from Cincinnati, I can get a Frontier ticket, depending on the week, for like twenty nine dollars one way. <laughs> so. Of course, that's not any thrills like checking a bag or carrying a bag or anything. <laughs> yeah, it should be it should be okay. Maybe I don't know. Um, okay, so yeah. Anyway, just let me know um, if you want to go and you want one of those tickets. Let me know. I will. And if too, if I mean, if if other people want to go on those passes, that's fine. I mean, I can pay ninety nine dollars. That's not a big deal either. Okay. Cool. Um, I wanted to ask if we want to do a giveaway again, at, like the globe again, or do we want to do something else? Or what do we want to do? How did it work? Was it good? I mean, it, it was hard to tell, actually, because it was kind of a small conference at FOSSE. I think they only had um, 285 attendees. So and we had 20, 27 responses. So we did technically get 10% of the conference to, <laughs> to fill out a form. Um, I don't know how truthful anything was, or people were just kind of, you know, going through it just to get through it. So I don't have a feel for that. Um, I don't know. It was it was a great um, draw to the booth. So at least, you know, that did bring people in, I think, and um, gave us an opportunity to talk to people. So in that way, I think it was worthy. Um, but I guess a couple hundred bucks, so I don't know. I think I I kind of like it. My inclination is for it. Another one, if not the same thing. I mean, something else. I mean, I thought the the globe was pretty relevant to our global community. So as far as Lego things go, it's you know kind of hard to make a <laughs> make a tie. But um, I mean, I did like the globe, and it was pretty cool. I don't know. What did you think, Don, or whoever else was on the call that was there, Sophia? What, did, what do you all think? I I thought it got people's attention. Um, and so people stopped by and talked to us, um, even if they didn't know what chaos was, which um, I do think is good. I, I think that, like you said, it was it was not that much money. And I, I think that for the, uh, just for the attention and getting people to the booth and getting them talking about something, I think it, I think it's beneficial. I liked it. Craig, I agree with that too. And I think, acknowledging it sounds like the data that we got wasn't necessarily useful then if we do want to have some sort of form then i have to kind of rethink the form to maybe something that's even lighter weight <laughs> um just because i agree i think if you look at it and you're like i don't trust any of this then it's not usable and so like why did we collect it in the first place but if we make it something that's harder to well easier to do then maybe we can get better data yeah, I would, I would, I would agree with that. Um, so I did get a little feedback that the form 
took a little longer than folks wanted. Like usually I think when you sign up for a raffle, it's like throw your business card in or here's my name and contact them. Like that's it. So like the barrier might have been a little high for some and that's what affected the quality of the data. Um, we did get three. We love you chaoses. So that was good. And I will absolutely think that those are 100% accurate. So yes. <laughs> um, but it sounds like we have a few that agree with uh, a few of us that agree we should do it again. So um, yeah. And I already have bought that bigger suitcase to fit it in. So I'm <laughs> ready. Because <laughs> it was not small. And, and I will say that it was a whoever, I think it was you, Matt, you were like, no, give it away there. Do not ship that. And I I'm so happy that you like fought for that because made returning it someone else's problem. A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry you about get your the life. free globe. Now get it yeah. home. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, a lot of folks were local, so it wasn't a big deal, but yeah, uh -huh. well, the person, the person who won it, they are in the process of moving to Amsterdam. And so they're trying to get rid of a bunch of their stuff right. and they're not sure how their partner is going to feel about them bringing home like this gigantic globe <laughs> while they're in the process of moving. Um, so that was kind of funny. That it's is a risky hilarious. take when you play the lottery. It's the they said they were happy with it. They, they were happy with their decision to take it home. They seem to really, really be excited. Okay, awesome. This email. Um, so the next one, I am absolutely putting Matt on the spot, uh, and you do not have to do this, Matt, if you don't want. I just thought that maybe since some of the people in this call don't exactly all attend the context working groups, maybe they would be interested in what's kind of going on. Yeah, sure, it's no problem. So the we have three context working groups right now, and these are working groups in the Chaos Project um, intended to help folks uh, think about metrics and metrics models in different contexts. And so we have a university working group, really the corporate OSPO working group or context group and scientific software context working group. So each one of these um, is helping folks in these different areas think about how metrics and metrics models can be meaningful to them. The intention of these context groups is to kind of abstract some of the work that we do in chaos. So like the details of um, you know, publishing a metric or the details of making a metric model or attending the common working group, kind of those, those, those details to kind of abstract that from people who participate in these working groups. So they can just kind of talk and think freely about how metrics or metrics models might be important in their particular context. So that's that's the reason for setting these up. And part of it is honestly, it's back to some of the points that Don had raised earlier is trying to take the resources that we have in the chaos project and help people find them uh, to be meaningful in their particular area of interest. So how do we kind of help bridge that for folks? Um, we do have liaisons assigned for each one of these context groups, at least um, I think for all of them. And the liaisons are people who will attend the context working group. Yeah, we do. Um, as well as say the common working group. So kind of attend one of our calls where we do get into a little bit of the details about making metrics or making metrics models. So it's a person who is in, intended to help listen to the conversation, kind of capture what new things need to be developed and then bring it to the appropriate spots in the chaos project to actually do that development and kind of iterate back and forth between the those those two different uh, kind of areas within the chaos project. So thanks to Jen and Ruth and Mary Blessing and Sean and Anita and Basayo uh, who have volunteered for these these roles. Don, I, I will I like I kind of wonder if we talk about like liaisons with the data science working group. Like is it anyway? I'm just I'll have to think about that too. Just how that would kind of fit together. Yeah. Uh, so then you could go back up, Elizabeth. And each one of those links then um, takes you to kind of this, it's a model that'll look very similar. So if you just, that's the university OSPO. And if you click on another one, just click on, yeah, go back and click on like the OSPO one. You see, they look similar. And so the intention here is to identify, well, let me back up. The intention here is to, to support um, how we think about metrics and metrics models in these particular contexts. And so we're trying to avoid like just a, a, a kind of 
open-ended discussion about, well, we use this metric in this particular context, or we use this metric model because this, you know, kind of these one-off kind of things. We're trying to assemble where metrics and metrics models might be able to assist the functions of, say, a university OSPO, or be able to assist a corporate OSPO or scientific software community. So that's what this structure is. So it's kind of pushing the metrics and metrics models down, down a little, a little bit. So as an example in the OSPO working group, um, those functions across the top, so internal adoption, education, engagement, leadership are things that we have discussed. These are still in a state of change. So these are certainly not uh, set by any means. And the conversation that we have in that meeting is kind of helping, helping kind of bring these together. And really we only focused on internal adoption in the last meeting. What's below um, are like, so you'll see like internal adoption and then discovery of OSS and organizations and alignment of OSS uh, with OSS community work. Each one of the slides then kind of unpacks each one of those particular goals. So yeah, you can click on slide two. And we had kind of walked through a series of questions that people might have to, to address that goal. And only then, it's the goal question metric approach, only then do we, we identify the metrics and metrics models that might provide insight against that question, helping that goal, and then helping that particular function within the OSPO. The intention is to help, again, help kind of frame the conversation around metrics and metrics models to kind of bring them out of these low, low level spots that they are sometimes and get them to be a little bit more understood in the context of, of these particular um, areas. The last part is, um, if you see kind of across the top, we have one of these structures, like your tabs across the top. We have this structure for university, we have this structure for corporate, and we have this structure, the same one for scientific software. The hope is, is that some of these goals, like we don't even have the goals set for scientific software, but some of these goals might be similar across these different context areas. And if they are similar, we can um, think together. <laughs> like we don't have to keep reinventing everything within each one of these different context groups. Do I expect that each one of these like things that we're looking at here, these models that we're looking at here, do I expect that each one will line up perfectly with the other context? Absolutely not. They will be unique in, in many cases, but I do suspect we will get some alignment between them um, and as we were talking about in the metric model meeting today, as an example, um, the university OSPO setting, the, at least the discussion is very distinctly different already from the corporate OSPO setting and scientific software. So there seems to be at least at the moment, more alignment between the concerns that folks in the scientific software space have and that corporate OSPOs have. Again, it's not perfectly aligned, but there's more discussion around things like uh, community engagement and community management, thinking about the communities that are that matter, whether it's in the corporate OSPO space or in the scientific software space. Communities has not really come up in the university space. And I just, I find that kind of interesting, so. Yeah, I find that sort of consistent with what we learned working with CZI. You know, there's a kind of a lack of desire among scientists to do community because they don't get funded or rewarded for it. Yeah, so it's just, it's just in a lot of the, well, anyway, we could go on yeah. it, like in yeah. the details here. Um, I was going to say like how universities are structured so differently as well. But anyway, this is the structure. Um, we would love for you to join any of these context working groups to help us think through these functions, these goals, these questions, and the metrics that might support uh, the conversation. So that's it. Who has questions? And if you don't like the structure, that's fine too. We can change it. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there as a, like, I'm just trying to get it. <laughs> I keep saying this, like, I don't, if you, if you want to make changes or you don't like the words, you don't like the questions, or you don't like the goals, or you don't like the functions, that is oh, totally okay. I, that's, that's great. The more input, the better. Cause I really want this to help people have conversations around metrics and metrics models. Yeah, I, I think they are great. Um, I like the structure that's put out kind of mixing square, um, especially for people trying to join these groups. 
and even um, the community members we have. Um, my question is not about this, um, the structure you've put out here, but it's, uh, I know last week, um, you talked about creating a document to kind of like outline the different responsibilities for a um, liaison. I, I was going to ask about the, that was shared already. Yeah. Oh, I've been thinking about it deeply, Ruth. I just, <laughs> I haven't done it is the other way of saying it. So I, I do need to, to, to get that document together. Thanks for the reminder. Sure. Thank you. Do you want us to put that in here too, Matt? AI. We'll just pretend like it never happened. AI. Matt is gonna to write a doc to outline. Did you say AI, Matt? Action item, not. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> uh, fake Matt German prey Twitter account on the. <laughs> is, is Matt a real person? We don't know. Oh. Yeah. Um... Okay. Do I spell liaison wrong? No. Oh, no. That's like my kryptonite, right. that stupid word. Oh, it's yeah. so hard. I never get it right. Can we, can we, I don't even know if there's another word we can use there. I guess I'll just have to learn how to spell it on the first try. Okay, great, great, great question, Ruth. Any other questions about this? If you all want to know when these meetings happen, let's go to the calendar and you can see because I don't know off the top of my head. I think they all happen on, oh, I'm not clicking on the right thing. Here we go. I think they all happen on the same week, right? They do, and they're kind of clustered on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Yeah, University, Scientific, and OSPO. So you'll have to wait till next week if you want to join, but here's when they are. And this is uh, US Central Chicago time for those who are not sure. Do we need more liaisons, you guests? I don't know. Do we? Good question. I think anybody with an interest in helping bridge that conversation between the context group and say common or the metrics model working group, the answer is yes. Especially so if you have an interest in that, yeah. for sure. Yep. You guys, if you want to um, attend the next university meeting and just kind of see if that's something that's interesting to you, that's when this is right here. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I tell you what, we'll put you down as a as a tentative. So we're not going to commit you to anything yet, but. Uh, word awesome okay anything else about these context working groups my i guess my final response or my final comment would be I, the reception has been very positive from my perspective so the ospo working group has really great turnout all the time um the the university working group. So we have folks from Carnegie Mellon, uh, Santa Cruz, uh, RIT, and Sloan just funded eight new universities to start OSPOs. So like Texas and Stanford, I have a whole list. And I reached out to everybody who received the funding on Friday to, and to welcome them and to join our meeting if they have questions around metrics. And I, I've heard back from a couple that, not only mentioned they would have an interest, but they had included us in their grant proposal anyway. <laughs> so, so they need to. So I, I, I look at this as kind of building, um, building quite nicely. Yeah, I think it's building wonderfully. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's really great to see so many folks from so many different places showing up at these meetings and regularly too. So it's it's really, really nice um, to have all these uh, new chaotics that I don't even know if they know that they're chaotic stuff. Huh. We okay. consider them chaotics now, That's neat. So. That's neat to know. <laughs> I tell them, I'm like, come get a sticker. And some of them did. So now they're official. They've been, had that sticker now, the chaotic sticker. 
Um, do we, do we, are we, I mean, I think we're okay with these three first to, to start. I mean, I don't, I don't really think we've had any interest in any other communities yet. I mean, I know we've had some thoughts about other places like event organizers, community managers, but um, we haven't really been, I haven't anyway, been really approached about that or seen and those are the, popping up. Have, has anybody? I will say those are the big three that have been sort of circling. We've been circling around for about three or four years now. So I, mean, I think there's a long chain. So the, only, the only other one that has kind of come up occasionally is event organizers. Yeah, we, we tried to reach out to some and I think they're just busy mostly um, because the reception was like, yes, that's an excellent idea, but <laughs> not sure if they I had the space the to pass it for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So we'll just kind of keep that one on our radar just for later and see how things unfold. But. Here are the other universities if you scroll down just a little bit. Sure, yeah. I guess it's six. I said eight, but that had received uh, funding. So we may see these folks popping up. Yep. Awesome. That's cool too that they were aware of us enough to add us, as I mentioned, in their grant proposals too. Probably helps that there it's Sloan funding and a lot of our support comes from Sloan as well. So mm -hmm. Sloan knows us well. Great. Thank you, Matt, for doing all this updating for, for everybody. If there's no other questions, we'll go ahead and move on. Um, that's okay. Uh, and I didn't want to put you on the shot uh, on the shot on the spot, Sean, for this. Yeah. Um, but this was from last week. I just thought I'd pop it back up and see. So I think I did see you making some progress or talking about this somewhere. So if you do have an update, great. If you don't, also valid. Um, we don't, I don't have an update right now. I did reach out to Kermore Lab and I've started to make some edits to the Augur side of it. So why don't we put me solidly on the agenda for design decisions and software next week? Okay. Awesome. And look at there. There's the end of our agenda. Ta -da. Do we have we have we have nine minutes? Hey oh. Anything anybody wants to bring up in that nine minutes? We won't be mad, I promise. Good. All right. Well, if nobody has anything else, you can reclaim your eight minutes now back to your day. Um, Elizabeth, just one question before we sign off. Mm -hmm. Math, I don't know if the Sloan Foundation reach out to other universities south, outside the US, because this could be a good opportunity to get some of the underrepresented uh, institutions from across Africa to join our metrics discussion in the university space. But I know most of them because uh, we have a similar project in Canada where we try to reach out to uh, collaboration and cooperation with universities from different third worlds, uh, let's say underrepresented groups. But most often they are limited in some scopes, mm -hmm. like fundings. So I don't know if the Sloan uh, Foundation can reach out to that. Uh, it's just a question. I don't know. Yeah, and I don't. I don't have an answer to that. I mean, it was an open call and I don't, I, I'd have to go look at the call to get a better understanding. Okay. It's a good question though, Armstrong and a valid point. So thank you. All right, well, I guess we will uh, sign off here and see everybody same time, same place next week. Have a great rest of your week and we'll see you all later. See you later.